This is where we spill the tea. I mean, we're here. We're on the Jones Beach Boardwalk. Oh Dee my Snyder's God. calling in. Wrap it up. We've been hanging out with the hot teas. The hot teas, by the way, are amazing. <laughs> Hashtag Long, Long Island, Island Life. Life. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, welcome back to Long Island Tea. I'm Kristen and Sharon. And we are here where we spill the tea on all the reasons why Long Island is the best place to live, work, and just thrive. And we have a very special guest today, Terry Alessi Maselli, who I am very privileged, and you too, Sharon, to call one of our very good friends. Yes, definitely. And a leader so in our happy. community. Terry, welcome. Thank you. Hi. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm totally late, as usual. Uh, I like, I, you can hear my like, click, click, click. I hear her. <laughs> We're waiting for you, and all of a sudden I hear like, Oh, and I'm like, and she's running that's in. life. I run, I literally <laughs> run, and you do too, Terry. I know from one thing to the next to the next to the next. And right. this is why you and I are such good friends. But we start every episode with saying, "How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Terry? Say it. How you doing? I have the accent. You yeah, do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and you sent the cutest meme the other day it. with like the little baby like how you doing? How you doing? She's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> She's like, you know, this is what Long Islanders do. We send memes about how you doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what, Terry? I love your accent. And I love that you admit it because it's always funny to me when Long Islanders are like, we don't have an accent. I'm like, yeah, do. <laughs> oh, I have a big accent. Yes, yeah, she <laughs> a does. A big accent. And I love it because everywhere you go in the world, the people say like, where are you from? They know where I'm from. Well, they think it's Brooklyn. They yeah. think it's Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. They think it's Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. But, you yeah. know. And they used to try to train me out of it. Yeah. And I said, I'm authentic. It is who I am. So this you, is me. You got it. It's me. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you stuck with it because, you know, I'm originally from Texas. And I grew up with a very thick Texas accent. And I cannot where, imagine that. I know. I where I, I grew up and it was like, all right, okay. Oh. <laughs> it was like, it was <laughs> stupid. Do? It was stupid. <laughs> and, um, but I went to the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and they taught you that you, if you want, and I wasn't in broadcast journalism, but just journalism, and they taught you how to lose your accent. And so I really worked hard to do that. And then now I'm like, people are like, you're from Texas. That's so awesome. Say something Texan. I'm like, and it sounds fake because right. I can't, yeah, I lost can't it. it I can't do yeah. it. It's fake. That's and so funny. I miss it. I if I go back there, mm -hmm. it comes. Yeah. It's, it's funny because my husband's in. from Maine, and every time we go up north, I, like the second we cross the border, he's like, pack in the car in the driveway. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> How about you park the car? So, anyway, Terry, I'm so excited to have you here. And um, we talk in this segment about how you're doing. And, um, it's crazy. It's crazy every week. But um, I just got back and I wanted to talk to you. I'm really excited to talk to you about this because you're a mom. You're, you have a 17 year old son? 15. 15. 15. Okay, so my daughters are 14 and 17. And so what I've been in is college touring. Mm. And I just got back from, uh, my daughter got accepted to several colleges. God bless Long Island schools. Yes. By the way, we always talk about how great yes. Long Island schools are. And these are opportunities that would never have come to us had we stayed in Arizona. Um, and yet she just got up to one of these colleges at University of Michigan. So we just got back from University of Michigan. Oh my God, let me tell you. So here's my story. Are you ready? I asked her this week. I'm like, how did she want to talk? I was like, I can't talk I'm to you about it. Tell it. on the pod. Wait. I got to talk to you on the pod. <laughs> oh, so this is news this to is you new. too? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So she's like, how was your trip? I'm like, mm. okay. So Sunday, it was just to refresh your memory. Saturday, bomb cyclone. Horrible right. bomb right. cyclone, yeah. Yeah. crazy yeah. weather, yeah. right? Yeah. Crazy, like, winter, ugh, crazy. Sleep. Fine. So I'm, like, awake all night because we had a 5.45 a.m. flight on Sunday out of Long Island MacArthur to Michigan or to Detroit. Well, but Baltimore, Detroit, whatever. And um, I kept checking on it. It's there. It's on time, on time, on time, on time. And you can hear the one, like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah, bitter blast. Through your windows. The headline yeah. is bitter blast. <laughs> yeah. Like crazy temperatures. You're going to have hypothermia if you go outside for five minutes. I'm like, right. what? What does that even mean? So, fine. Get up at, you know, whatever, 3 30, which is 4 what, 4 30, which is 3 30. Because of daylight savings. Because of daylight, daylight savings. savings. Yes. It was daylight savings. So, we're driving by the checkmate oh, on the way to the airport, my favorite, you know, like, like local bar. bar. Yeah. It's hopping. <laughs> 
It's three thirty in the morning. It's, well, it's like four thirty, but right. technically it was still three thirty. Right. So the whole bar is packed. I'm like, what the heck? So we get there, lines because it's spring break. Out the door, crazy <gasps> oh lines. God, we I wait forgot. forever, and you know they don't really have TSA pre-check or right. clear or anything. So we go there, forever. Fine. We get to the gate. We're like, okay. I'm like, I'm gonna buy you water. I'm getting. To, I'm going to start buy work. Canceled. Your <gasps> flight was canceled. Oh no. I'm like, oh, oh god. By the way, we parked further than I've ever parked in long-term parking. It was packed, wow. tons of people, Spring which break. is great, yeah. right? What's yeah. what we want in tourism industry. Ice, straight ice. Yeah. It was like, you know, Sharon, you know, I love winter. Yes, okay? I know you too. But <laughs> this was the moment where I was like, mm, I get it. Okay, this is, I get We're it. Why people in don't, let's get people anymore. that live in Arizona. <laughs> like this, I'm walking from the parking lot, it's like, <laughs> wind, and there's like straight <laughs> ice. Straight ice sheets. Oh like, my god! It was like Siberia. Oh, god. oh. And I'm like, mm. and then canceled. Go home. Oh. See you tomorrow. Try again tomorrow. Try again. So wait, anyway, what did you do? Did you go home? I went home and I slept hard. You did. I was so tired. Yeah, because you're up all night <laughs> waiting. Yeah, I was and so like, tired. It was yeah. crazy. It was like a free day. So finally, I built enough time. We did it again, and the 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 college tour didn't start till twelve thirty. So we. 5.45 a.m. flight. Right, so right. we made it in time. The next day was lovely. The next day was not nearly as crowded. The weather was beautiful. It was fine. Oh, everything, good. everything was seamless. Yeah. And uh, we went and she loved it. And then we looked at the price and it's $70,000 oh a year. Terry, how do parents do this? I don't know. Because by the time my son goes to college, they're saying 325000 <gasps> Three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Chris has three, almost three, two, and one. Like Skylar's going next, but he's got two kids in college. I came back. I said, "Chris, what? Uh, yeah. How? What? How? Did, it's like that uh, TikTok. Hey, hey, who, who, what? So, <laughs> so I said because you know, as a working mom, which you are, mm. and this is what I love about you, and we're going to talk about this. But as a working mom, so uh, working moms, little kids. You're like daycare. How do you yes. afford daycare? How do you it's afford childcare? Mm -hmm. Right? How? Do, what did I do with? I used to think I could have had a second mortgage. Yes. I could have had a Mercedes. 100%. What did I do with all this money before I had kids in daycare? And then you're like, oh my god, they're, they're in finally school. in kindergarten. Yeah. And then it's no like, more oh, cheerleading, soccer. Yeah. Clubs, nationals. What? <laughs> and then and then it's like proms, cars, crazy. Yeah. And then it's college. And where are you supposed to save for your 401k? Where are you supposed to save for your yeah. time? And go on vacations. Right. Which these kids, ex, ex, I don't know about your kids. My kids, it's probably my it's probably my doing because of travel. <laughs> it's probably my fault. They <laughs> they expect super luxurious yeah. vacations. So you you want to know where my son wants Tell to me. go? Where? Dubai. Oh, oh my for vacation, gosh. yeah. Vacation. Yeah. Because he loves architecture and he loves all that well, Dubai's stuff. Dubai's amazing. Do you know how expensive <laughs> Dubai is? Oh. <laughs> It's amazing though. Yeah, yeah. My kids are like, we go to a hotel and they're like, where's the amenity? Okay. I'm like, mm, this is not normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. If they don't get upgraded to first class on Delta, they're like, oh, they're like peasants. <laughs> Crazy. But you know what? You think that's just your kids? I think that's society I think it's a generation. now. I yeah. Think 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So my daughter, I was telling last week, my daughter went on a cruise with her grandmother, and she didn't travel with me. So she's like, Mom, they want me to pay $30 for luggage. I'm like, yeah. You're, she's like, can I just go to the priority line of Delta? I'm like, no. No. Because you're not priority. Because <laughs> you don't. No. You don't travel enough. Yeah. So you don't get the same privileges. You're not just born privileged. Mm. Right. Mm. You earn that. But you know that's our that's our problem as parents, right? You give your kids everything, and now that's what I'm struggling with is is you want your kids to have everything. And on Long Island, I have to say, the opportunities are there, right? The opportunities are there yes. for our kids to have everything, everything. and and mm -hmm. it's it's one of the reasons why we live here, and we give them these incredible. Educa this incredible education, these school opportunities, and these trips. I mean, they're so exposed to New York City, the greatest in the world, and yet then you're like, also, this is reality. Right. 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 So I took her to the Cracker Barrel for breakfast because <laughs> this is like, listen, I'm from Texas. Yes. Yeah. What okay? is it? Like cheesy biscuits? I love that, the like Cracker Barrel. Oh my God, it's delicious. The it. pancakes cannot be beat. They're crispy. Wherever we go, if it's down south, I'm like, I gotta go to a cracker barrel. I love is, it. This is why I love you. Yeah, I love it. 
So we go to the I crack. I eat, I shop, I love it. I love shopping. <laughs> I love it. The shopping is, I like, you have to control me <laughs> oh in there. Oh my gosh. I'm like, is this a DVD of Moonlighting? My husband times me. He gives me like 20 minutes. He gives minutes. you a limit. He's like, I'm out in the car in 20 minutes. I'm like, You're these cherry candies, these old fashioned yes. candies? What? How many times are you on a road trip and you're like hitting a cracker barrel and you're like, I need this rocking chair. I can I just guess. throw it on my hood. It's fine. It's I fine. love the cracker barrel. And I had to take her there because after we were at, you know, University of Michigan, where like literally everybody had Canada Goose jackets. Yes. I was like, let's go have some pancakes, cracker barrel on the way to the airport. And then I was like, do you see this person that works? the? Cr-? Like, this is what we do in the tourism industry, right? right? Like, we represent the service industry, mm-hmm. the people that are working and Really day to day, Terry, and you do this in your sector too. You represent the manufacturers and the people that are making business happen. And this is my pride and joy about the tourism industry is we we represent the working man and woman Mm -hmm. that is serving your meals and cutting your hair Mm -hmm. and fixing your drinks and 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 cleaning your hotel rooms and all those things that you don't necessarily see or care, but that make your life and your experience so important yeah. like it makes your trip it makes your experience important and i love the men and women that service our industry and i said i'm like do you see that woman that is pregnant and working at cracker barrel she's working her ass off yeah by the yeah. way and god bless that woman that is america yeah right. <laughs> yes kenji's like okay <laughs> does everything have to be a teachable moment <laughs> It's like, what? yes, honey. And I'm like, when we're yes, on a college tour, true. yes. It does, right? It's so true. I'm like, I so go into true. this whole thing. So true. I'll be, I'll be on my phone and I'm like, Nick, my my son's name, you see what's going on? <laughs> it's like, mom, st- we were just talking yeah, about that. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Stop, mom. Stop it. <laughs> Leave me alone. So no, this Get Terry, out. I swear it's to so God, funny. I'm on the plane and... If we're like taking off because it's like sunrise, right? Because it's beautiful. And it's, Kent's like, this is so beautiful. I'm like, it is so beautiful. Can you imagine what people of Ukraine are going through right now? And she's oh, like, God. can you stop for oh, one God. second? Just ever? take it in. Can you just Fix not? I'm like, oh, I just gosh. want you to be grateful. Yeah. Right. For the moments, right. anyway. And so, that's what it's about. Yes. Right. It's not that we give them everything, is they need to appreciate it. Yes. They need to be grateful. And Absolutely. Understand. I feel the same way. And Terry, I love you so much. And you are so amazing. So I want to talk about you said you liked white wine. So we're drinking. Have you ever had a white Merlot? No. No. My favorite, we were talking about Pindar. My favorite is their winter, winter white. white. I love it. I knew it. you were going to yeah. say I that. I love it. I love I it. I knew you were going to. That's, that's their most popular. Yeah. yeah. Winter and white. what was the and other summer one? Blush. Summer blush. And we said it. it was, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful when it's like ice cold. White Merlot is something I had never drank before this podcast. And Long Island Wine Country ex- uh, exposed me to it. And I'm like, I, I think you it's fabulous. Yeah. Do you like it? Have you? I love it. She it's, loves it. Delicious. Right? You would yep. never... And this is what I love about this podcast is it exposes you to wines and, and experiences that you would never maybe, if you're at the liquor store, you're like, I don't know what I'm going to It's right. scary. I'm going to go with yeah. my winter white. But you're like, oh, now that I've had it. Yeah. So we're drinking RGNY's um, White Merlot. Mm-hmm. And it is actually absolutely delicious. It's 2019. It's a unique white wine with aromatic complexity, hints of fresh strawberry and grapefruit, easy to drink and opens up beautifully. And it really does. It really does. <laughs> it really does, right? We were it's just, delicious, we really. Were, beautiful. You said white, and I was like, I was like, red or white, and you said white. I'm like, I'm going to I got you the perfect white glass Merlot. of wine. I love it. So now that we're drinking wine, and, um, and you're our best friend, Friends, but why don't you tell the pod why you're like about you and you are it's women's month right you are such in my mind and in my heart an inspirational inspiration. leader you have been oh. an inspiration to me since I've moved here I remember the first time I met you and you were so you know women aren't always the most supportive of each other yeah. you were so supportive and so incredible and so inspiring to me so and I just think like you guys your relationship obviously <laughs> but like like she said, inspirational. I mean, just your your background, your career path, everything that you've done, where you've come from, everything is just very inspirational. And, and, and before Thank you start, like you are the representative of the Long Island Innovation Park, and and also the HIALI, the Hopak Industrial Park. Uh, Long Island Association, right. which is the association that represents the Long Island Innovation Park. But it's very similar. When you and I first met, we had similar missions where people don't understand Long Island and mm-hmm. how amazing it is. And people don't understand that this incredible 
industrial park of uh, manufacturing and innovation and technology is the second largest industrial park in the country right here on Long Island. Yeah, and I have to say, you know, <clears throat> that's my thing. Like mm-hmm. when you when you when you talk about it, I want my son and our kids to be able to, if they want to, right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. stay on Long Island. So all this work we're doing and. Um, so Alice and I yesterday were out with a bunch of board members and we visited a bunch of people in the park. Now people are out and about. It's great. It's just there's a great it energy feels so to it. Good, right? So the first company we go to um, donates every single laptop to every single school district. Wow. Not only on Long Island in New York City, and we go from there and we go to a major biopharma company that has twelve locations in the park. They make help me, Allison, six billion. Six billion tablets a day. Wow. Wow. A day. Not a week, not yeah. a month. A day. Six billion. And then from there we go to Long Island Cares. Yeah. You know, wow. Harry Chapin's. They, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry Chapin's organization. People don't realize Harry Chapin was from here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And established this incredible organization that still lives on today to help Long Islanders. And he was saying that forty percent of the people right now that are food deprived are working on Long Island. Yeah, they are not home. homeless. Their wow. food, it's, it, the, I think the new term that they taught me, which I thought was so interesting, was not, you know, starving, but it was, it's food insecurity. Right. And that's really important that it's not you're, you don't have food or that you're starving for food, but that it's food insecurity. Like you don't necessarily know where your next meal is coming from. And that is stressful. Mm. I can't even imagine. And I love that these organizations are here for the benefit of Long Island. And I always like to say, there are so many companies here in Long Island Innovation Park that you have no idea what they do. And I I, I heard, you can can tell me this is true, but I heard, I read an article one time that uh, the organization that makes the buttons on the airplanes that recline your seats when you ruin the person's life behind you um, is right here. Yeah. In the <laughs> yeah. So you can thank Long Island for it that. It is. It is. <laughs> um, and yesterday when we came back, I said to the staff, you know, it still amazes me when I take these tours, not only what's in the park, but what's on Long Island, what we manufacture, mm-hmm. what we distribute. I mean, it's the coolest yeah. stuff that yeah. you've ever, I'm just You're inspired by it. Well, people don't realize, like, 1-800 Flowers, Cannon, Estee Lauder, um, Pirate's Booty was made here. Um, Matt Cohn was talking to me from LA today about the the, the largest guitar string manufacturer. Dario, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dario, they're great. And uh, Anja Bunkamore, our good friend, who is an aerospace manufacturer. Yeah. And, you know, every lunar module say, that yeah. went to space was made here. It's, it's really... I, I love having you on the pod, and I'm so grateful that you're here because I feel like Made on Long Island should be a, a regular segment of ours Absolutely. that we should just partner Absolutely. with you on. And that would be yeah, great. That would be yeah. great. That would be great. Yeah, you'd be like a regular. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be a we super work, hot yeah. tea. We have to work tea into it in yeah. some way. So made on <laughs> brewed on Long Island. No, but know. like yeah. made on Long Island because. People have no idea of the, you know, so we're working on our uh, strategic plan and one of the things we're talking about is innovation because we're, we're big innovators mm-hmm. here at Discover Long Island. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is, is I feel like we're just following in the footsteps of innovation that has been on Long Island for generations. I mean, the Nobel laureates and Brookhaven National Labs and the, I mean, we're curing cancer here on Long Island. It's really, it's an, it's, I'm like blabbing, but uh, you are a native Long Islander. I Tell am. us about you. Like, I where am. You from and like everything. local, local. You yeah. like you're hyper local. Up, yeah, hyper local. <laughs> hyper local. So I grew up in Comac, went to Hop Hog High School. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Live in Smithtown. Thank God I travel a lot because right? I would never be any place, right? But um, but I love it. Yeah. I love it because. Um, God, I used to, I won't tell you how old I am, but I used to ride my bicycle around here when there was still wires up and still yeah. like they were really developing the park. So to see this now is incredible. And uh, listen, I remember a defining moment for me, you laugh, is in 2013, Hop Hog High School called and they said, we want you to be the key keynote speaker for the graduation and I thought I have never been that nervous in my entire oh. life because I, I felt such a obligation to right. like inspire these kids and I can't even remember what I said quite frankly <laughs> right. other than do what you love which yeah. I tell everybody but um, but it's just so great to be here and to be doing these things yeah. right? I'll never and, forget 
the keynote speaker of my high school graduation, and I'm from Midland, Texas, the middle of nowhere, but it was oil country, also different, like right mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody went up there and said, Winston Churchill gave the shortest high school graduation commencement ever, and his words were, don't give up. Mm-hmm. And I feel and like now yeah. more than ever, that is so relevant, oh, yeah. especially what Definitely. we've been through in a pandemic, don't give up, right? Mm-hmm. you know? And, and we're gonna talk to you about leadership uh, later on in the show because I really think that you are a leader what not only in your career path but what you do for women yes and how you support other women and and in women's history month which we're so excited to have you here because it's really really important that women know that the way to support other women is to give other women the chance to lift yourself up and to be a leader and to give people the opportunity. It's not clawing your way to the top like it maybe used to be, you know, in what was it, Working Girl or whatever, when women stepped on over women to get to the yeah, top. Yeah. Um, now it's really, I feel like, the definition of leadership for women is, is lifting other women oh, up. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I, and I know yep. you feel the same. Um, so tell us real quick before you, you, we go into that is about, you said you're from Long Island. Tell us about your family. Yeah, so I'm going to shed some truth here. So, you know, I had my son when I was 46 years old. Wow. Really? What is that about? Wow. Oh, my God. Good for you. N- naturally. naturally. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is why we're Naturally. Yeah. Can you yeah. see can you, like, totally tell that this is legitimately friends? Yeah. Um, and I've ne- my point in telling you that is I've never taken a normal route in my whole yes. life. It's never been like the norm, yeah. like what was supposed to happen. Yeah. And uh, gee, I remember when that happened. <laughs> I remember my doctor calling because at that time, seriously, other than famous people, I was like the oldest person on Long Island I felt that had a kid. Aww. And was, it wasn't planned. It was totally accidental. Well, I you mean, were we were trying. trying okay, but, okay, okay. But, um, and, uh, and listen, had a bunch of miscarriages right, and... Right. And that's had a fourteen percent chance of having him. So I mean, talk about so a miracle, right? That's amazing. But you know yeah. what? Yeah. I love that you yeah. said that because do you know how many women don't talk about their miscarriages? Yes, exactly. You know, with the fact that you're brave enough to say this is a this is a whole other show we're going to have you back on about because fertility is such an untalked about thing, mm-hmm. and it's it's right. it's, it's sad. sad and it's, it's rampant. So sad. It's yeah. rampant. Yeah. If you, yeah. When you talk to people one on one, you find that a lot of people have that same experience. So the doctor said to me at the time, "We want to put you on TV so you can tell everybody." I said, "No, no. I'm forty no, I'm not you. going on TV to say I had a kid." And uh, so anyway, uh, I'm an older mom, and that's why I tell you the story. So my experience in terms of being a mom. Not only is it an experience of like I don't I don't know I balance I think I blend really well I know that sounds weird but no, it doesn't I because think it's great. you really can't balance it when you think about it and particularly as you're older mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you, you're in a just a different mindset with the whole thing and so I have I don't have a lot of patience when I go up to PTA meetings and people you don't adjust deal with this <laughs> right <laughs> I love that and about I, you. listen I really. Kristen and I have talked mm-hmm. about yeah. offline, right? Mm-hmm. We've yeah. both been in situations where where female leaders have not um, lifted us up, right? And it's horrible. Yeah. It is. It's disgusting. It's sad. Truthfully, it's sad because it's not. Why? What? What is the? What is the benefit of that? Yeah. yeah. So you know what my dad used to say to me? He used to say, "Take it as a complimentary." He said because they're really just jealous. Yeah. <laughs> isn't isn't it like? Um, Copy, copycat or jealousy. flattery is yeah. the biggest Best. form yeah. of yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I know. Like yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? The biggest form of flattery. What is what it? Is it? What? Imitation. Imitation. Imitation is the biggest form. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. And and I tell my daughters that too. You have a son, right? right? I tell my daughters that too. Is that it? But it's hard for girls to realize that because girls, especially if you don't have that ego, you know, it's hard for them to understand. I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's hard for. I'm like, these girls are just jealous of you, and they're like. But why? Yeah. But why would they be jealous of me? Like, I'm just like them. I'm not any better than them. There's no reason to be jealous. And so it can be really hard for women to understand that. Oh, absolutely. You know, but yeah. it's, th- it's a threat. Yeah. And you know what? I think the difference and one of the reasons why it's so important for me to lift up people and you for li- to lift up people is we have a sense of self. That's where it starts. But um, I was lucky in my life. Mm-hmm. I was really lucky in my life that I had mentors that were not only men. Mm-hmm 
but also very, very strong women. My grandmother, who didn't drive, woke up one day and decided, I'm just going to go to work. Called a taxi, got a job. Oh my and my goodness. grandfather came home and he's like, where, where, where are you? Yeah. Like, where'd you go? With, with um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just that, just do it. It's do what you got to yeah. do to make it happen. So yeah. you're surrounded like people like that. So I have very little patience for people who don't do that. It's a shame. Because I think it's just so important. And it's so necessary today. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand the benefit of not doing, for men and women, right. to your point. You have uh, some, and I do too, we have some great male leader supporters of us that have, in my career, like, I love lifting up women. But also, the people that have put me in the situation I am today, I am today are mostly males. Right. Me too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We've talked about yeah. this. And... Um, there have been men that have said, you deserve this. You you are positioned for this and, and have kind of had to convince me that I was ready for it in a time when I necessarily didn't think I was. And you have and, and have some great board, board, our board chairman, Brian DeLuca and Mitch Pally and Mark Weinstein. Yeah. And, and, and we have some so many incredible yeah. board members um, that like totally have our back. And you. Joe Campolo, your immediate past chair, I watched the HIA LI event that you guys did um, for tourism at the airport, and he, I need to write him a thank you note. I've been, it's on my list, if you tell him. Joe, thank you. Joe, if you're listening. I, I, I watched it online, and I was like, blown away by your support, and your current chairman from Rich H2M, Human. Rich Human. He is such a star. And you know you need to have both. You need to have the, the the men that understand and support. And God bless these men. But as women, it's really really important that we that we are there for each other and we lift each other up. And it's just I just don't understand the motivation otherwise. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yet it's there. Right. You know. So I'm reading a book right now. You have to read it. Oh. It's Valerie Bertinelli's new book. Oh. I love Valerie yeah. Bertinelli. I it's love It's called Enough Already. Enough Already. Enough yeah. Already. Yeah, right. where we'll she's, she's enough. I, I saw the interview it's with her. It's a great book. Oh, my God. It's a great book. You have to read it, really, because it talks a lot about not only understanding that you're enough, mm -hmm. but really helping other people understand that you're enough. And yeah. you know what, Kristen? I think one of the reasons why we're that lucky with the Joe Campolos and Rich Human and Brian DeLucas of the world is because, I don't know about you, but I'm okay with... Um, appreciating people and I'm okay with giving them a limelight and I'm okay with working in collaboration mm -hmm. like it's funny that you say that though you know Terry it's funny that you say that because I'm getting getting lucky I remember and I'm just gonna say this like you know we get the real real Alyssa's always like I'm gonna cut this <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna edit <laughs> but my I remember my ex-husband saying well you you you've been lucky in your career to get where you are. I never found my space, but you've been lucky. And I'm like, I haven't been lucky. I've worked really, really yes. hard. hard. Yes. And women will say that. We got lucky. lucky. Right. You're yeah. right. But you know what? Men won't say that. Right. And and you know, what is the definition of luck? It's opportunity meets preparation. preparation right. And um I think so one of the books I'm reading and I was gonna tell you about well, it's not nearly as exciting as valuable. <laughs> I if you ever watch this show called Cheer, because I have daughters that are cheerleaders, right? right? right. And so there's this show called Cheer, and it's an amazing Netflix show. I very much encourage you to watch it because it's about a junior college in Texas where people go people go to community college that aren't don't get into college. This is their last chance, you know, at making something of themselves, and they're cheerleaders and they're real athletes. And this one coach. She's taken them to championship 14 times wow. in like 20 years. Wow. And Coach Monica is amazing. And she just came out, based on her Netflix show, she came out with a book called Full Out, where they do full out. They're the, they're the most pristine athletes, and they work so hard, and they go full out. And, and her whole book is about putting it all on the mat, put it, giving your whole heart and going full out. And not no shortcuts to hard work. You don't, you you have to show it and put your whole heart into it every single day. And the important part is there is all, there's alternates, okay? So there are people that wait their whole lives mm -hmm. and never get a day on that mat. 
but mm-hmm. they support their team. Supporting your team when you're not on the mat. And so I've been listening to Coach Monica's new book <laughs> called Full Out, and uh, a great leadership book about just there's, it's work. It it's work. not luck. Yeah. I mean, and, and I love that you say that, and, and you're grateful and appreciative, as am I, and I said that, like, I'm lucky, and he's, you're lucky. And then I had to be like, oh, you know what, I'm not lucky. I earned I put in this. The work. Yeah. I have earned yeah. this, and it's okay to say I've earned it, and um, and you just, you're the last one there, and the first one there, and mm-hmm. you don't cut any corners, so I love that. Um, the other book I'm listening to, did you come to our annual meeting? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kendra Hall. Mm-hmm. So she will you make sure I love it on Audible. Her. I'll give it to her. Make yeah, sure you give it to her before she leaves today. Um, so Kendra Hall, her book came out that we talked about when she was our keynote speaker, and her first book was called Stories That Stick, which she talked about. And then it's Choose Your Story, Change Your Life. And um, I got to tell you, she did. I'm obsessed with this book because I got to tell you. So she talks about this theory. And this is, this is like how I feel about my daughters. I'm a hard mom to be a mom of because I have very high expectations because I work really hard to give you this opportunity and, and you have to sacrifice. And there, I have missed, you know, you say blending and I agree that, I agree with that. It's blending and not balance, but also I call it like prioritizing because sometimes mm-hmm. You can't blend everything. Like there are times I miss things. I miss things as a mom, as a working mom. And sometimes I miss things for my kids. Like Jen, our sales manager, took my daughter to her sixth grade orientation and taught her how to use her locker. Like I wasn't there. I didn't. Right, right. I I was at IPW and I couldn't miss it. And I missed her moving up ceremony and I, you know, and, and it's hard, but I, but I also made almost every single one of her cheerleading competitions and I planned my trips around her yeah. and, and Tegan and, um, but so you have to read enough already. I'm telling you, oh. you enough have to already. read the book. Right. Uh, yeah. It has a lot to do with that. Yeah. That I, we have to forgive right. ourselves. Yes. Like yes. we can't. Right. So yeah. you have to, it takes a village. I mean, that's how I feel about it. So 100%. I have certain people, good friends that I rely on because I can't be at everything. Right. And I talk a lot to my son about, um, and I bring him a lot, a lot to the things that we're doing in the HIALI. So when he was at a very young age, he was at the trade show every single year Aww, yeah. so that he could walk around, and so understand. that he could look. Manufacturing day, he goes to Festo. He goes to, he goes to those companies yeah. so he understands that we're doing this and I'm doing this to help him. Right. 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 But it, it hurts. I agree with you. Oh, I know. It's, so it's painful. It's, it's hard. You know, agree. And it's then hard. Especially when they're, you know, my kids are so young. And I know teenagers are like a little bit more understanding and like they get it. You know, they get careers, they get everything. But like when you're dealing with the younger, gen, younger kids and they're like, why weren't you there, mom? They won't remember. You, they won't remember. I know. <laughs> but like it's that heart wrenching, pull your heart out. I'm so sorry I had a meeting, you know, like, but you try to explain it to them. And like you said, you bring them around, you bring them to the different things that you're doing and whatever. And like, this is what mommy does, you know, like, this is what mommy's doing every day. Like, and I have to say last weekend, I was on my computer, not doing work. I was just looking up, planning a trip. And my son had his friend over and he's like, you have to be quiet. My mom's in a meeting. Like (laughs) he pulled him in his room and he's like, my mom's on a meeting. Don't say anything. And I was like, what a good boy. Like, yeah. I'm just Gmailing right now. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> it's interesting because my daughters will say that today. Like, um, they're, when I when they grew up, they were babies, and I worked in Arizona for resorts. Mm-hmm. And so they always had to be, like, the kids. We all, whenever the TV crews came, Easter or whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they had to be the kids in the background. And so they didn't have the opportunity to have anxiety or be shy yes, or whatever. Right, right. Like you're, and I remember there was one time they were at the Fairmont Princess and it was Easter and they were in their most beautiful Easter dresses and they were supposed to be playing tennis with the tennis and they were beating Whacking each other. Each other. Yeah. And it was like, I'm going to kill you. Um, but they didn't have the chance. And But, you know, they appreciate it now. They mm-hmm. do appreciate it now. And you are enough. And um, anyway, I think it's just, it's always... Uh, it's a blending and a balance and a sacrifice and a prioritization yeah. of what you can do. But 
I think you do it so well, well thank you. Terry. Yeah. And um, I look to you as I'm glad, another... I'm glad I make it look that way. Because you do. <laughs> you do. I will tell you the best piece of advice I ever got from a, a male mentor of mine many, many years ago. He said, you know, you really want to do what you want to do. Make sure as a business person that you practice the profession of business, not being a male or a female. Forget about the male and the female piece, but but just practice the profession of business. Like mm -hmm. understand profit and loss statements, understand revenue streams, understand strategy, understand all that. And it was the best piece of advice I ever got because you're right. When I use the word lucky, we're not lucky. We walk into a boardroom, we do what we got to do. We plan the work, we work the plan. I mean, we just <laughs> yeah. do it. You yeah. just that's do awesome. it. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why we are where we are, and that's why we can lift each other up, because yeah. we understand what we go through, you yeah. know? You're yeah. so right, the preparation. Yeah. You know, I remember um, I, in Arizona, there was this woman, and she was so beautiful, and she was the head of, like, the utility and lobby. And she was she looked like a Claire from House of Cards. She's gorgeous. <laughs> and I worshipped and feared her at the same time and uh she went she came up to this women's group and she was never like this at our normal meetings that we had in lobbyist meetings but we were in a women's group one time and she came up there and she said i'll never forget she said i, I my l biggest learning experience in life is i went I, I was asked to be a keynote speaker and i came up and i thought all about what i was going to wear and how i was going to look and it and then I got up there and I wasn't prepared and I froze. Mm. Mm. And I looked like an idiot and they never asked me to come back. And I've learned from that moment to over prepare. And Sharon knows this. Yes. I drive myself insane. 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 Practicing, 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 right. over preparing. No, I do too. Absolutely. And, um, and that's what we have to do as women. Right. You can't take it for granted. Right. Anyway, I think you're a total inspiration and I love having you as the leader of honestly the the largest industrial park on long island uh, made up of incredible global businesses mm -hmm. and that you're are you're the first female leader of this organization am i wrong president and ceo yeah, absolutely president and, CEO. Yep. Yep, yep. and before you came from dale carnegie i was which, i was yeah. with dale carnegie training for 18 years so when i was probably about 16 years old my dad said to me I'm going to put you through a class. Wow. It was the best thing. It was, again, I've had a lot of defining moments in my life, but it was the best moment or 12 weeks. And um, from there, I worked for them, and then I worked my way up to managing director, and I wow. managed New York City and Long Island, and it was great. It was just great, really. Mm -hmm. And then got on the board of the HIALI. That's how I was introduced, at least originally, to the HIALI. But I think what you, I don't know a lot about Dale Carnegie, but I think it teaches you a lot about positivity and being, and that is so, on Long Island, more importantly than ever, being yeah. positive. And you and I share that. Mm -hmm. And being a positive leader and being able to rise above mm -hmm. and have that just overarching positive thinking. Right. And you know what I think? We've had this discussion before. I think it's our obligation as leaders to really talk about not only that and be positive, but the good stuff on Long Island. Yeah. There's plenty of bad stuff all over the place. There's plenty of wars. There's plenty of, you know, there's plenty yeah. of bad stuff. Yeah. But, you know, we, we have an opportunity really to, I mean, this is the most beautiful place you could <laughs> ever live, right? You're an hour away from the city. You're uh, 45 minutes away from the east. It's and amazing. we we have it's to amazing. just it's amazing it's promote am it uh, Terry and I love your positivity and you and I totally align on this and Sharon yeah. and and I think that you know people will people love to complain about anything but on Long Island in particular um, but <laughs> when you start to think about the opportunities like people say oh you know for me why would you move here from Arizona to Long Island I'm like because the beaches and Oh yeah, the beaches are amazing. Also, the education. Oh yeah, 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 the education. Also, you're closest to this most this city, city, the most amazing you know, city, amazing city in the like, world. Oh right, right, right. And now my daughter has this incredible like this is endless opportunities. She was accepted to so many schools, and um, anyway, we'll talk about that. But I just think that you are such a gift oh, to yes. our region, yes. literally. And I just, I'm so glad that you're here. And we have a really fun segment with Brie coming up in a minute because 
In addition to talking about leadership and serious stuff, we talk about completely like ridiculous like, stuff. I mean, you know, personal stuff yeah. about like relationships. But, but um, real quick, I wanted to talk about uh, this next segment that we have with Bree. So, mm. Bree, can you come up here? Come on up, girl. Okay, so. Terry, you listened to our last show, and we had a, a write-in from Bob. Single Bob was what we call him. I think you should have Bob on the show. I, know. <laughs> so we, we, I think yeah. we should, too, because we had so much, like, yeah. different comments from so many people. Yeah, people wrote in. Yeah. Bit. We had a lot of commentary about Bob and people wanting to help Bob. And uh, he might be already married by now. And, and uh, but, but it inspired us because we were like, you know what? We have our own single people here at Discover Long Island. And our most eligible bachelorette is Brie. Brianna. Uh, hey Brianna. Girl. <laughs> who is our YouTube star of our YouTube show, Long Island TV. Yep. Yeah, make sure you get close to the microphone. Come in yeah. close. And um, and our uh, Instagram social media guru and just our all around. We just love you. Um, we stole you from Rochester. Well, you were from Long Island and then you went to Rochester University, right? Uh, Brockport. Okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that means, but no, you came I back. I was in Rochester for a while. Yeah, we stole her from Fizzer Rochester. And um, we just adore you. By the way, I was thinking about you because my dogs love you. You stay at my house when I'm like traveling. I miss them so much. No. They're her besties. No, my dogs like <laughs> Can my I dogs. Can like, come pick them up one day? Yeah, She's well, like, I, I need to like take them. No, yeah. I need to. I need to stay there on spring break. We'll talk about that separately. But anyway, Bob inspired us. So we were talking about one of our favorite shows last session. Love is blind. Love is blind. Which I watched the. Did you watch the season finale? Oh yeah. Oh my god! Did you watch the reunion show? I like show? a reminder on my phone like every Friday. Do you watch this it's a train wreck. It's, it's a horrible. train wreck. It's horrible. It's, horrible. it's, a, horrible. Train it's a horrible show. I it is it. horrible, but hey, it gave us this opportunity on the pod to be like, hey, look what we can. Did do you watch this. The Bachelor? No. It's horrible, and there's I two know. Bachelorettes now. God bless them. The Bachelorettes are amazing. But, but the, the funniest thing is, is Bree's like the Bachelor. Bree's like, I applied to the Bachelorette. Like, yeah. how many times? You told us how many times. I don't know if it was exactly. Exactly yeah. Dirty, but and <gasps> other people have submitted me too, not just myself. So okay, can I, I tell you when I worked in Arizona, we hosted the Bachelor um, auditions, and my assistant made it onto the show. No, I way. told her I'm like, Pfft. you never told me this, girly. Way. All you have to do is I was like, wear a T-shirt that says I heart hot tubs. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We had an open bar. Oh my it's god, it's not hard. Funny. It's not rocket that science. Funny. Right. but you know what? I don't trust that show. That trust show. That show is bad. So yeah. I trust us more. <laughs> I trust the three of us more to yes. help you. Mm -hmm. Then and so we were like, you know, what, we're going to do this. And then we had an interview the day with a new um, employee, and she was like, you should call it "You Belong Together." Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're hired. Yeah. Welcome to the <laughs> team. Literally, Thank I was you. like, "Belong was awesome. Together." And so, so we're going to do a love is blind ally kind of Segment. dating game called mm -hmm. "Belong Together" with you as our first contestant. By the way, can I tell you a secret? I love it. I know uh, the secret. Chris's <laughs> daughter, Skylar, was Instagram messaging me last weekend. I love Sky. So Sky and I were good friends because um, we did an LITV episode together, and her and my daughter Kenzie like Hit they're, it off. they're yeah. snap friends yeah. now. Okay, so they're the same. They're they're like the same age. They're awesome. So cute. And Sky texted me, and she was like. I heard you're doing Love is Blind, L.I., and I am involuntarily volunteering my dad. I love it. He needs to I be on your show. Because He's going to have his own show. Yeah, because yes. we all heard about Chris. If you listen, you know about Chris's old anxiety. Terry, I'll have to fill you in. It's amazing. Hysterical. Uh, yeah. Blind date over the holidays. Hysterical. So I was like, girly, Sky, I got you. Yeah, okay? and we got dad. Yeah. Don't I worry. I got you. She needs more help than yeah, I do. Yeah, I love Sky, yeah. and so I'm here for her. And so. <laughs> the was rough. We're going to see how it goes with you. And then we're going to... Chris is next. And then I'm saying uh, your sister, Kathy. Yes, exactly. We have next. like such a combination. We have a whole lineup we're ready. of this. Okay? This is like the newest thing. But Brie, we um, we commend you for being our, our, our guinea pig. Our so, guinea pig, exactly. Yes. So Brie, first of all, we're going to get uh, bachelors to vie to date you. And we have a host that wants to host your date. And it's... Curry Club at Sagar at yes. 
Port Jefferson, and it has a special meaning to you. Yes, um, it used to be called Schaefer's, and my parents met there, so I feel like there's some luck in there. So oh my God, there might be some like yeah, vibes. Some magic. Magic. Yeah, yeah, I, it's yeah. gonna be awesome. They want to host your first date um, of the bachelor that you choose. So, uh, gentlemen, you have to vibe for this. And so, what we're gonna do is next week, you have to DM us on LITV Podcast. Or email Long us. Long Island Tea Podcast. What is it? Long Island Tea Podcast. Or what's our email? Long Island Spill Tea Podcast. Spill the tea at Long Island. Spill the tea at Discover Long Island. Thank you, Sharon. Or DM Discover Long Island or any of our social channels. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Contact There's us a on lot of ways social. to reach out to us, but reach out to us in some way quickly because this is going to be next week. And um, in fact, less than a week by the time you get this. And we're going to be um, allowing Brie to put you on. Uh, we're, what we'll do is we'll have you zoom in and you'll have your camera off. And Brie will um, get to know you without seeing you. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to do like a whole dating game segment where we will have the contestants zoom in. Uh, we're going to narrow it down to three contestants. And we will ask Sharon you. Sharon and I will choose. Yes. And we will ask you to keep your camera off. And we will interview you and Brie at the same time. And then Brie will make the final decision. So Brie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm Brie. I'm turning 28 in July. I'm a cancer. (laughs) (laughs) I'm an emotional natured person, I feel, but also professional. I like to adventure. I love going hiking, skiing, but also like Friday nights, I stay in. You're like a homebody a little yeah, bit? Like okay. Well, that's a cancer. I was just going to say it's a cancer. That's like, yeah. I'm a cancer, yes. right? So yeah. you you are... You like a bottle of wine in a fireplace. Yeah. Like, you like just your home buddy. Yeah. yeah. Friday nights, order in, have a glass of wine, watch a show. Like, that's ideal for me. And then <laughs> the rest of the weekend, we can go out, do things. Um, but yeah, I really like adventuring. Um, I want someone who's independent on their own, you know? Okay. I don't want someone I'm going to have to baby, you know, mama's boy. Like, I'm not doing your laundry. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, and just someone that's more mature. I'm ready to settle down now. Yeah. I'm turning 28. Um, so maybe I need someone who's a little older because guys don't mature for like, till yeah, like 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So, I mean, I'm sure. open to a little older. Um, but still, you know, someone that likes to go out and do things, but someone who's mature and, you know, I'm over the party stage. Right, yeah. I'm right, I'm ready right. to settle down. Right. So what are your, um, what are your deal breakers? Deal breakers? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you, you want someone, you said, you told me earlier, you want someone that's spiritual. Yes, yes, yes. That has some kind of spiritual yep. understanding. Mm-hmm. Right. But um, is, it, is it a breaker? Is that a deal breaker? Um, if they don't believe because in anything, that's huge. That's yeah, a deal like for yeah, me, honestly. Um, and then like I want someone who has family values mm-hmm. that wants mm-hmm. a family. Um, yeah, you want, and you said you wanted somebody that was uh, open-minded because we're living in a very yeah. politically world. volatile yes. world, yeah. and you don't yes. want somebody that's too stuck mm-hmm. one way or the other. You want yes. someone that's open-minded Respects and everyone's respects and yes. yes that's important yeah. that's I critical. feel yep. like yep. Yep. and yep. you need to know that like don't come at Brie with your weird right or left agenda <laughs> yes. okay because yeah. she's not going to deal with that it. keep no. your flex Look at yourself her. she doesn't need to deal with your agenda I can't handle it. yeah, yeah. It's too much she doesn't me. need that drama in her life no but I respect everyone's opinions I yes. believe we both should just respect each other's yeah values. absolutely so what do you think is the biggest barrier um for men and women today like what is the prop what is the hardest part about dating today oh my god the apps are just horrible yeah Mm -hmm. that's what bob said yeah that's what inspired this if they're on there to date you don't know what they want really right and then they'll lead you on and pretend that they want to date you and then they're like no you know or you know even girls do it they just ghost out of nowhere start answering right yeah um yeah, it's like really hard nowadays. And, you know, I feel like everyone has a past. That's fine. Sure. Everybody um, comes with baggage, right? Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, later. I have to say, I don't understand why you're still single. Yeah, it's hard. For uh, knowing us knowing you like yeah. we do, you are beautiful. You're talented. Smart, you're one of the most hardworking amazing. people. You're here late yeah. every day. You put your heart and soul into your job. You, you, you don't, you're not entitled to anything. You don't 
approach things that way. So we just love you. And um, listen, don't even apply unless you are top a top caliber. notch because mm-hmm. Kristen and I and are not literally gonna, yeah, like we're the not chosen gonna, ones. We're not going to deal <laughs> with it. Okay. You got to be. And Chris, too. Yeah. Chris is like, don't come for my brie. Right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So are you good? Are you, you're feeling you ready good? for this? By the way, thanks yes. for doing this. Yeah. Brie, and thanks. Depending on how it goes, so uh, we'll have you guys, uh, whoever applies, even if you don't go to the final dinner, you'll get a t shirt, a belong on Long Island t shirt. We'll send you a shirt. And um, you'll, if the finalists will get to go on a date with Bree to Curry Club at Saghar mm-hmm. in Port Jefferson Village, thanks to Port Jefferson Chamber. Oh, yes. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, Barbara oh, Ransom amazing. is amazing. And, and yeah. And so, uh, and so we're looking forward. DM us, Sharon, at the places where are they, where do they DM us? <laughs> What are they? Uh, at Long Island Tea Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. But you can also send us an email at spill the tea at discoverlongisland.com. And we will be sure to uh, accept your nomination. But Chris and I are literally the judges. So good luck to you all, eligible <laughs> bachelors. Yeah. <laughs> and so we'll do is a, a DMS. And then what you'll do is if you're the final three, we'll have you zoom in and you'll turn your camera off and Brie will talk to you so she doesn't see you. And you'll have an emotional connection. And then we'll she'll eliminate to the final two. Love is truly yes, blind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do Love is Blind Alive. So thank you, Brie. We love yes, you. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. And so here's, to, here's to finding true love. Yes. Terry's yeah. right. I think you're going to find it. You're going to get married. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Terry, At a venue on Long Island? Of course. Yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, you I'm seem beautiful awesome. inside and out, Brie. So thank good you luck. So much. I really appreciate it. But you know what? We also have some great things happening on Long Island. Yes, we and, do. And uh, before we close up, I wanted to share a couple of really cool things that are happening. Um, one is the return of the Great South Bay Music Festival. I am so excited oh for this. Oh, my God. This is iconic. This is iconic. It's it, It's been shut down, obviously, due to the pandemic yeah. and everything like that. But this is like the first comeback. Um, they are starting to sell the tickets. I'm so excited. I've never been. Have oh, you ever been? It's no, awesome. I haven't been. But <gasps> oh, it's isn't awesome. it exciting that we're just getting back? Yes, we're back. I mean, we are back. You know, I, I have like... been to that chocolate festival. Though. You uh, have yeah. been. Have. Oh, if you have never tasted um, chocolate covered bacon, what? Oh, yes. To die for. Wow. I know. That's what I said. I'm like, what? <laughs> but it's sweet. And, and it's salty, salty. Oh and the my best God, combination. The best. Cradle of aviation. That's yeah, cradle of yeah, aviation. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think on March 27th. Yeah. Um, amazing, and the. The, I think it's one of those things that s- before the pandemic, we maybe took these things for granted. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, yeah. maybe I'll go next year. And now you're like, they're back. You don't know what next year holds. Yep. Go to We're these going. events. Um, also, one of one of my personal favorites and somebody I hope to get on the pod someday soon, Debbie Gibson. Oh. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. I reached out to her. I you know. did. Debbie Gibson I- is... Come on, she's Debbie. from my era. <gasps> Listen, Mine too. We Girlie. had Mur last week. I think we can get Debbie Gibson. Yeah, no. Well, Debbie is. Let me tell you, bef- she was the original Taylor Swift. Yeah, in my oh, opinion, totally, one hundred percent. She was my generation's Taylor yes. Swift. Yes, she wrote her own music, "Shake Your Love" and "Foolish Beat of My Heart." Like, no, girly, I had that hat. That hat. Oh, you I, sure did. <laughs> you know, I was like channeling, and I didn't even know Long Island. Right. I'd never even heard of oh, Long Island. Funny. I was from West Texas, and I was like trying to be Debbie Gibson. That's hysterical. Um, and she's one of those women that's like aged better. Beautifully. She looks yes. she does. amazing. She looks great. She's going to be at the Patchock Theater. Um, and then we talked about last week, June 10th. Um, we're still doing our giveaway yes. with Mer. Speaking so you of have to follow our social. Yes. Um, we are giving away two tickets to the two Mer's. Um, Live yeah. performance yeah. at the Paramount, which yeah. we are going to. You're going to drag me there, I'm and I'll go, you. I guess. But uh, because how awesome, be awesome was he? I, mean, I loved him. He was so awesome. But they're doing a whole thing with, like, miking people up. I hope it's us. Yeah. Also, I want to go out book, on the street. His book is on our Amazon page, amazon.com slash shop slash discover Long Island, because his book, so cool. I bought it already. I can't oh, have Area it. 51? It's I haven't read it yet. I mean, just came out, yes, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, just yes. released. Yes. Um, one more thing as Women's History Month is funny because I was uh, sending this to my daughter um, and she's like trying to figure out how to go to University of Michigan and I'm like uh, speaking of Long Island Life um, this girl from Ward Melville oh, yes. High School everywhere. won $150,000 yeah. yes. in their Regeneron National Science Contest Amazing. Amazing. on Long Island she won a hundred. she's like sorry 
I'm sorry disappointing that wasn't me. You. No, but like oh. honestly, we talk about <laughs> Long Island schools all the time. There you go. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's where it is. Literally. Like, I mean, my daughter's high school, yeah. like $150,000 national. She's one of the three finalists. Does Kenzie know her? No. Oh. No. Yeah. Kenzie's well, like, Warren sorry. sorry. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, <laughs> I'm like. Sorry, it's not what? me. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing I'll talk about next week in Kendra Hall's book is the uh, power of high expectations and, and how high expectations breed high results and vice versa. And I tend to be a high expectations kind of leader. We would never be able to get our kids together. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what my son says about me. Your yeah. expectations are outrageous. Yeah. Oh. But you know what? That breeds high results yeah. and does. vice versa. It does. And, and not just as a mom. But right. as a leader. Right. Yeah. And that's that's why we have these incredible teams of things. So anyway, Terry, you have been oh, just amazing. a joy. A amazing. Joy. Cheers. This was a lot as of fun. As we knew. Yay. Lots I'm so fun. glad. Cheers. And I have a new wine now. Yeah. 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 Merlot. Yeah. And thanks for all you do for not only the Hop Hog Industrial Association and the Long Island Innovation Park, but for Long Island in general, because you oh, are yes. a Long Islander through and through. And you are a great leader who empowers not only women, but all people uh, that want to lift Long Island up. So thank you oh, so thank much. You. I feel the same way about you, too. Oh, thank do. you. Love you. Fest. I do. It's a love it's a fest. Lo- <laughs> it is a love fest. <laughs> so come again. Will yeah, you come again? Absolutely. All right. Yay. Take care. We'll all see right. you next week. Cheers. <laughs>